Hi, everyone. Uh, like mentioned before, my name is Michael Salati. I am a developer advocate at a company called LiveKit. Out of curiosity, how many of you all have heard of LiveKit before or used LiveKit? Okay, that is like three or four, or actually 10. I didn't even realize how many of you are over there. Hi there. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I will at some point touch on what we do at LiveKit, but more importantly, what my plan to do is discuss uh, the tech needed to make AI voice interactions fast, fluid, natural, and that way we can move past clunky delays into something that feels genuinely real time. So uh, let's just dive into this. Um, so I'm going to make a safe assumption here and say that we have all used a chatbot at some point in time. And they're useful, but text misses so much. Again, by show of hands, how many of y'all may have gotten in trouble for sending a text message that you thought was funny, but they didn't pick up on the cues because obviously they don't know how to read? So show of hands, how many... Yeah, it's a real problem, yeah. And uh, believe it or not, ChatGPT and Llama can run into the same issue. There's a lot of information that's convo uh, conveyed in things like tone, emotion, your speed of thought, and voice carries so much information. Traditional chatbots often aren't enough anymore, and users expect interactions to feel more human-like. Uh, ba -ba -boom, ba -ba -boom. So human interaction and communication is inherently multimodal. It's not just what you say, it's how you say it, whether that's like hidden cues in your face or your tone and stuff like that. And voice is often, hold on, let me just make sure. Voice is often faster than typing. It's great for hands-free situations and is crucial for accessibility. As AI capabilities grow, the demand is shifting towards agents that you can simply talk to naturally, train of thought. Um, and the goal isn't just getting answers, it's having a fluid conversation. Um, 40 years ago, Steve Jobs unveiled the, I, I think it was the Lisa computer specifically, uh, and pitching it as a computer that could speak to you. And the idea of a computer that adapts to users is nothing new, but the technology that we have now makes that more and more possible. At LiveKit, we believe it's important to give developers the tools to build those types of experiences. So let's recap real quick why voice is powerful for AI. Because it carries emotional weight, tone, pitch, rhythm. Um, and AI can understand this and can be more empathetic and accurate as a result. So one thing it provides is richer communication. Uh, voice conveys emotion, sarcasm, urgency, and intent beyond words. And this allows for AI to respond more empathetically. Uh, there's an increased efficiency. Often it's faster than typing, especially for complex explanations or brainstorming. I can say from personal experience, this isn't quite AI specific, but uh, I always click the little microphone on my keyboard and I just talk out my thoughts instead of bothering with my thumbs or just swiping across the keyboard. And I'm sure some of you, thank you, random citizen, <laughs> for agreeing with me. Um, it provides enhanced accessibility. It opens up AI interactions for people with disabilities and varying levels of literacy, uh, which can be really crucial in certain domains. Um, one thing I remember almost every year, and I think Facebook is now doing this with uh, the Ray-Bans, is people with visual impairments. They can just wear the glasses or goggles or whatever it is. And as they walk, it'll describe to them what they're seeing. So if you can't really see things or if you're having a hard time navigating on your own, having that sort of assistant can be really empowering, not just in the sense like, oh, it's cool AI, but no, it's giving you the ability to do things that you previously wouldn't have been felt comfortable doing on your own. And finally, it is more engaging. Voice makes interactions feel more personal and conversational. Um, critically, voice, like I said, it boosts accessibility and opens doors to users of all abilities. This is vital in fields like healthcare or customer support. Ultimately, voice makes AI feel like a conversational partner. So voice is great, but we have one massive challenge, and that is latency. 
Human conversations are incredibly quick. The gap between speakers averages at about 200 milliseconds. And if you're anything like me or my family, you're often interrupting each other. Now, consider a typical AI voice pipeline. Um, the first step is to take the user's speech, turn it into text, and then you'll feed that text with whatever prompts or uh, tuning you need to do to an LLM to figure out a response. You get that result back as text, and then you convey that text back to the user as speech. Each one of those steps takes time. Speech to text first needs to process audio, then the LLM needs time to think, um, which is where our time to first token is super important, and text to speech needs to generate audio from that result. If these are separate cloud services, like let's say you're using uh, Solero, OpenAI, uh, whatever, um, you're adding a network round trip time for each step along the way. And the result is that latency can easily hit over 500 milliseconds um, or over a second. Sorry, I keep on looking over there. I expect my boss to show up. So if, he, if and when he does show up, please just like lay praise on me. Uh, sorry, nervousness. This is also my first time doing a presentation for LiveKit. Even <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope this is not recorded. I hope he never hears this part of the conversation. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum. Don't want to lose my train of thought. Ba -ba -ba. So yeah, there's network hops between the different services, between your speech to text provider, your LLM, your text to speech. And the result is, like I mentioned, total latency of on average 500 milliseconds, but sometimes greater than one millisecond. And if the average experience for like you and I talking one-to-one -one is 200 milliseconds, there's a gap there that feels unnatural and jarring. Boom, 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 breaks conversations, feels robotic. And so this is kind of like a breakdown of what a human conversation uh, equivalent would be like for each of the step that our pipeline process would have. And you can see where the pipeline uh, breaks apart. And I do kind of provide sources for the pipeline speed uh, for things like the speech to text and the uh, LLM speeds. So you can use that as reference. Feel free to take a picture just to get an idea. But yeah, we can have uh, experiences that are typically a little bit slower than what a regular human conversation could feel like. And I will switch slides. So a huge chunk of latency comes from just moving audio data around. Um, how do we send vo There he is. Everyone say hi to Russ. <laughs> Sorry, you came up earlier <laughs> in nothing but a positive way. Okay, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, how do we best send voice data between a user and an AI agent efficiently? Traditional web technologies struggle here. Uh, tools or um, protocols like HTTP and REST involve setting up a new connection for every interaction, which is way too slow for streaming audio. WebSockets, on the other hand, are just better because they keep an open connection and they typically run over TCP. Now, if anyone took computer science as a uh, major when they went to university or do anything networking thing, uh, I'm sure you've heard of UDP versus uh, TCP, did I? Oh yeah, we're still on the TCP side of things. And so like our main issue with TCP is like, again, TCP is really preferred for when reliability is key. Uh, the idea with TCP is that packets are sent back and forth between a client and the server. And once the client sends information to the server, the server verifies that the information is what the client is supposed to send it. And if there's something missing, then it'll send it back to the client, be like, hey, we are missing information. And so the client sends the packet back again. And what ends up happening is if you're doing something like video chat or voice chat and one packet is messed up, that back and forth between verifying the information and what's being sent can end up causing a lag or a delay. So even though WebSockets are technically faster, they still don't work better for voice or video information. Uh, so they prior WebSockets prioritize re reliability, uh, but they're not optimized for audio video packet handling. And so this is where WebRTC really shines. Um, it's an open standard built specifically for real-time audio and video. Uh, for media, it primarily uses UDP, which is faster because 
it doesn't wait for the acknowledgement or verify that the data packet being sent is correct. It's just full send, hope for the best, which in a real time experience is like super important. I can survive if I misheard something a little bit compared to needing to ask the person again and again, what was that? What was that? Like we can make some inferences, it's okay. Um, and WebRTC is sophisticated in the ways that it can handle things like packet loss and adapt to network changes. Um, it has built-in mechanisms to prevent things from grinding to a halt, like forward error connection and adaptive bitrate adjustments. And it's engineered from the ground up for the lowest possible latency needed for interactive video and voice. Okay, so beyond the transport layer, which I will make the suggestion you should be using WebRTC. Um, the AI architecture itself impacts latency. And there's two tr approaches to building agents uh, or AI architecture. The first one is our traditional pipeline, which uh, I kind of mentioned before, it's the speech to text, feeds to the LLM, and the LLM will output is translated back to uh, speech via uh, text-to-speech. Um, the big advantage here is you have a lot of control and potentially higher accuracy as you can pick which models you want to use for each one of these steps uh, for this job. The major downside though is that there's accumulated latency from each step and the network calls between them. Plus, converting uh, to text in the middle loses valuable information such as tone or emotion. Now, the other th step that we have is end-to-end -end or speech-to-speech -spe -speech models, which you may have heard of referred to as Omni models. These aim to go directly beyond, um, sorry, I'm blanking out for a second. Uh, these aim to go directly beyond audio to uh, output audio with a single model. Uh, theoretically, these are faster because they can cut out steps such as the speech-to-text or the text-to-speech step again. But right now, benchmarks are showing that often while the internal processing is faster, uh, the practical end-to-end -end latency, including getting audio in and out, can still be higher than a well-optimized pipeline, uh, as mentioned above. Um, accuracy can also lag behind specialized speech-to-text or text-to-speech models in some cases. So as of today, there is a trade-off where optimized pipelines uh, often deliver lower real-world latency, aiming for that sub-500 millisecond range, while Omni models can provide better preservation of vocal nuance. And uh, while they might be slow overall, there's more room for optimization as these models continue to be developed upon. Um, but latency isn't just coming to raw processing speed. It's also about how we manage uh, conversation flow naturally. Humans interrupt each other regularly, and we take turns rapidly, like a spitfire back and forth. And AI agents need to be able to handle this gracefully. Uh, one thing that we have is handling turn detection. How does an agent know when the user is finished speaking and when it's time for the agent to respond? There are uh, basic voice activity detection models that just wait for a period of silence, but human pauses can happen mid-sentence, like just now. Sorry, that was really bad. I, I <laughs> uh, Waiting for silence adds unnecessarily delays and often um, can hurt the experience. We need smarter approaches like semantic turn detection, AI models that are trained to understand the meaning and structure of a conversation to predict the end of a sentence more accurately and quickly, even before a complete si silence, just based on the way that you are talking, it kind of knows, okay, we're probably wrapping up right about now. Um, and the second uh, issue that we need to handle is interruption handling or bargain. If you start talking while the agent is speaking, it should stop right away to listen to you, just like a polite human would be, not like me. This requires the system to be constantly listening for user input, even when generating an output, and to immediately halt text-to-speech uh, playback. And so getting these interactions uh, right is crucial. 
clumsy turn taking or failing to handle an interruption makes an agent again feel like a robot and not just a conversational partner and it can increase the perceived latency or the poor experience associated uh, to these experiences so Talking about orchestration, we need to have a fast transport layer, again, suggesting WebRTC if you're building voice or video powered AI agents. Uh, an efficient AI architecture, um, whether that's going to be a pipeline model or an omni model where it's just speech to speech. Um, and we want to be able to orchestrate all these different models and pipelines easily. So, do, do, do. so how do we handle that? Well, thankfully there are frameworks, specialized frameworks that do exist to be able to uh, orchestrate all these different models and all these different concerns together and help you build voice and video powered AI agents. Uh, giving a quick pitch for LiveKit, this is an example of how you could build a very simple uh, AI agent with LiveKit using the pipeline model of speech to text, uh, LLM and text to speech and voice activity detection and literally that is all the code that you need to do that. And if you wanted to do just voice to voice, again, literally, this is all the code you need to do that. I invite you to take a screenshot and experiment with this at home. I say screenshot, picture, you have phones, you can figure this out. Um, and the focus on low latency isn't just an academic concern, it's what really can unlock truly compelling voice AI experiences across industries. When you think about uh, customer service agents that respond instantly and can actually handle interruptions and requests, all of a sudden talking to a bot isn't as painful as it used to be. Uh, I personally hate those clunky interactive voice response or IVR systems where you just keep on saying agent and hope it eventually connects you to an agent, just putting that out there. Um, in healthcare, real-time interactions can be vital for patient triage, uh, scheduling, or even enriching 911 calls. Um, sales agents can, that can qualify leads through natural conversation, educational tutors that provide immediate feedback. I actually believe uh, Duolingo now provides a mode where you can just talk to an AI agent to practice your languages. And that's actually a really good example on the educational side of things. But um, achieving that sub 500 millisecond near human experience is really a key enabler to building amazing voice first experiences that are valuable to users. Now, some of the examples I mentioned, we actually have demos on how you could build these or like built versions already, for example, like the medical triage. We even have an agent that can look at whatever you uh, are showing it and it'll tell you what you're looking at. So I invite you guys to check out our recipes page to tinker with these on your own and figure out uh, how to build your own voice AI agent. I'm gonna keep it up for five, four, three, two, one. Um, and I guess I'll just breeze through these key takeaways. Uh, first is we want to build nat natural and engaging voice interactions, and we want to aim for a sub 500 millisecond range. Uh, second, we, our transport layer is going to be really important. WebRTC uh, using the UDP for media is vastly superior to traditional HTTP or TCP based uh, transport. Um, Third, AI architecture requires trade-offs. Uh, traditional speech-to-text LLM uh, text-to-speech pipelines give you a lot of control and potentially higher accuracy, but they can accumulate latency and they might lose nuance and you need to weigh the pros and cons between the different uh, pipeline models that you can be choosing. Um, you wanna be able to handle uh, interaction dynamics such as when a user is interrupting or when a user is finished speaking. And finally, there are wonderful frameworks that lift all the heavy work or burden off of your plate for this. Um, yeah, so thank you all for listening to my 20-ish minute presentation. My name is Michael Salati. I believe I have time for one, maybe two questions. Uh,